Howdy, everybody. It is Sam Feifel, your host of your favorite little podcast about reading, writing, bookstores, doing things late at night after traveling and being punchy, John Updike's ghost. And I'm here, as always, with the lovely, the talented, the sister of me, the co-owner of the bookshop of Beverly Farms, Hannah Harlow. How are you doing on this Tuesday night, Hannah? There. Uh, everything's pretty normal for me, but you just got back from a big trip. I did. I was traveling down to Dallas and uh, going down to see the Celtics demolish the poor and sad Mavericks and Luca. It was um, I love Slovenia night, and we all got green scarves to celebrate Ooh. our pending Slovenian uh, tourism trip or something. I don't know. Cool. And uh, Luca sucked, and they <laughs> lost. And too bad for him. It was terrible. Uh, Yay! Yeah, it was great. Uh, awesome. Was really as you know, as you know, our family is very literary. Um, so there was lots of book talk on uh, the trip. Book, but... At least one bookstore visit. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. Shout out to Intera Bang Books. We can start there. Actually, um, let's do it. I wanted to see independent bookstores while I was down there. I'm in Dallas. I don't get to Dallas very often. And uh, as I say, uh, shout out Kate and Rick, co-owner Rick. Rick owns 10% stake in the old bookshop in Beverly Farms. He sure does. He's been on the pod before. Everyone's familiar with him. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, maybe some people are new to the pod. <laughs> people might have missed that episode. I exactly guess. right. So anyway, we go to Interabang Books, which was destroyed in a tornado. Did I saw that, that on social media. Yes, I did know that. Oh, you knew that? I didn't know that. I thought that was like kind of a big revelation. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, well. I was listening. Now I can't remember what book it was, but I was just listening to a book where they told me what Interabang meant. And I was like, well, I probably should know this because I know of the bookstore. But I think Interabang is a combo of an exclamation point and an question mark. Uh, yeah, it's like the combo yeah. question mark yeah. exclamation point is an intera bang. Yeah, I always thought cool. it was with an O. I thought it was intera O bang for some reason, no. but intera bang actually does make more sense spelling wise because uh, there's an intera bang records. I think that I was where I've seen them a lot, and maybe there's a publishing house too. Or I don't so know. they're in a new location. Yeah, so the community rallied around them, I guess, and they found a spot. And it's a little, you know, strip molly, but you know, yeah. it's the the rich Dallas suburbs, so it's a very nice strip mall. Two floors of strip mall, mm -hmm. you know, okay. one of those deals. Oh, not, it's like outdoors, yeah. yes. and you kind of go up the escalator. But they're they're only one floor. I would say they're about twenty percent bigger than us in this like current location. I don't know if this location is going to last forever, but uh, you know, nice, just one big room with good. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everything's brand new in terms of display. So their displays were great. Nice. Um, so I almost bought a Larry McMurtry book because apparently mm -hmm. Larry McMurtry is big Dallas writer. I didn't know. He's and, from Dallas? I just thought he was from something further west. I think he's from Dallas because there was a big display, you. right? And I, was I totally like, believe you. So, you know, some guy walked up to me who uh, was a bookseller. I think his name was maybe Jeremy. Jeremy is one of the owners, so that would make sense. Mm, he said he just moved there from oh. Tennessee. So, maybe a different Jeremy. Maybe he said his boss's name is Jeremy, and I forgot. I don't know. Yeah. Sorry, Jeremy. Anyway. I'm not good at remembering names. And um, so, I was like, oh, should I buy one of these Larry McMurtry's? I want to buy, like, what's the, like, cool Dallas author that I should read? And he's like, well, you could read Larry McMurtry. He didn't seem to be a big fan. Um, but he recommended this Ben Fountain book, uh, Devil Makes Three. Yeah, we and have that on the show. Yeah, I know. I had seen it. Yeah. Is he from I, Dallas? Yes. He's like, oh. he comes into the shop. He's like friend of the bookstore. He's from Dallas. And Rick oh, nice. was like, oh, haven't you read Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk? And I was like, I've never even heard I know of I it. haven't read that. I've it's heard of it. I know of it, but I, I never read it. something. Like, did it win, like, a Pulitzer? It won something. Some National Book Award, probably. Right. Uh, his work has received the National Book Critics Circle Award for fiction. Yeah. 
Penn Hemingway Award, uh, Los Angeles Times Book Prize for Fiction, and uh, like Whiting Award. So this guy is good, apparently. Yep. I've never read, uh, read him before. And uh, so that was the recommendation that nice. the uh, bookseller gave to me, and I'm looking forward to it. I am impressed partly because I know it's a pretty decent sized hardcover. And usually when you're traveling, you opt, one would opt for a smaller paperback. I'm, you know, I'm a big boy. I can carry around books. Uh, Excellent. My also was, I was also reading Murtaugh on the same trip. So wow. And that's even bigger. So I, I am not intimidated in any way. Yeah, I love this because this, I, I am reading big books right now. <laughs> You love big books. You cannot lie. I cannot lie. Yeah. Um, so, well, what book, big book are you reading? Well, well I, I promised to talk about, to talk about this right last away. time. Oh, you did. Yeah, that's right. And I did finish the 600-page book in two weeks. I didn't know it was a big book. Kelly Link's book oh, is yeah. a big book. Oh, yeah. It's big. Oh. It's big. Let's tell people what it is in case they It's didn't called listen. The Book of Love, and it's by Kelly Link, and it comes out February 13th, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is Kelly. Link's I didn't realize first... it was six hundred. That's a yeah, it's monster. a monster. It is kind of a monster. And no pun intended. This is her first novel. She is known as a celebrated short story writer. Mm-hmm. And I always think it's kind of funny when a short story writer writes like a really long novel. I, me too. I was not expecting that. Yeah, um, I partly was able to finish it because I spent. Three full days on the couch with a sprained ankle. Oh, I heard about your injury. We should tell people (laughs) about your injury. Uh, So actually, this is something that we seriously do need to fix in the shop is we are not exactly ADA compliant, uh, given that our building was built in like the 20s and was like a barber shop for dudes. Uh, And now if you're in a wheelchair, you're kind of SOL, which is not good. Uh, But... And basically, it's bad getting in or out in any yeah. of the doors. And Our UPS and, guy hates us. Yeah, and... really doesn't like us. There's like a bush and a concrete yeah. step and slippery things. And... I mean, I didn't really slip or anything. I was just walking out the back door, which you go down like two steps. You do have to like kind of turn sideways. Oh, yeah. Because um, there's and a bush in front of you. Because there's a bush. The bush does not need to be there for any right. reason. And I was carrying two boxes stacked on top of each other. They were pretty heavy. And then I also couldn't see anything. Mm-hmm. And I got to the bottom step and I just ate it. <laughs> That's the thing that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Totally ate it. And then <laughs> to go back into the bookstore, I just left all the books scattered. Yeah, I was just scattered back. on the lawn. Was it wet? And meaning it um, was. Wasn't it kind of like bad weather? It's kind of snowing. Yeah, that's right. Um, but Amy went out and picked up the books for me. Oh, I so I wasn't sure. I thought you might be alone. You know, sometimes you look up. By yourself. Not alone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then I was just lying on the floor in the back office because I felt nauseous. And Didn't you pass I, out? You said you I passed did out. faint. I was maybe going to spare our listeners. I don't know why. Just to I mean, like not embarrass myself. I don't think it's, everybody. it's not embarrassing to faint. Yeah, I totally fainted. Um, uh, I mean, <laughs> hey, bookseller but, who works for us, I'm a very important person who has just sprained my ankle falling out the back door and is now fainting with the pain of it. Maybe is not the best way to think of yourself, but like, you know. But, I am such a pro fainter. It was a very <laughs> elegant faint. That's true. You have much practice. <laughs> you just were lying down. It's like, I passed out. Um, and so I thought I broke it just because my reaction was so extreme. But right. it's actually, it was just a sprain. And now it's three days later and you're fine? or It's uh, two weeks later. Well, I mean, like... You have recovered on the couch for three days. And it was fine. And then I sat on the couch. Um, fortunately, we have fabulous booksellers who were able to jump in and cover for me. And I camped out on the couch. And I read Kelly Link's book. And it was so good. I loved it so much. And the pain in your ankle did not color your view of the pros? No, not at all. That's good. I mean, 
I wish I could say I was on painkillers, but they did not. Oh. Give you, they don't give you painkillers for nowadays. No, the whole brains. opioid epidemic kind of is a yeah. bummer. So the book is what is it set, even about? What is it? About? It's set on a coastal town in Massachusetts. I'm going to say South Shore. Is I thought for Westboro. sure you were going to say Maine, and I was going to blow up. No, not that Maine. She so Billy Link lives in Massachusetts, though right. she is inland. Mm-hmm. I don't know where she grew up or anything, but like. um this is set on the coast in a town called Love. It's called Book of Love, but I feel like the town has a. Yeah, anyway, who awesome. cares? Yeah. Um, so you have men, you have a bunch of different characters, but the setup is there are these three teenagers who, at the beginning of the book, are sort of they've been missing for nine months, ah. and they get brought back from the dead. From the dead, so, yes. They have died, and their old music teacher has seemingly, they've like escaped death. Mm -hmm. And um, their music teacher has worked some magic. So they're now like, oh, our music teacher is not a normal guy. It turns out he's got the music teacher. Mm -hmm. He's got magical powers. Mm -hmm. Um, And and then he also has this other friend who has magical powers, and they're kind of, they they set them some tasks. Like they're like, you can, you need to go like, you know, do the tasks we set for you. And if you do them, well, two of you will get to stay and two of you will not get to stay. Two of you. So it's like a competition to stay alive. Yeah. The other two of you are out. Yeah. So it's more like magicians, magicians, and less Harry Potter magicians. Yeah. And so they swears? kind of, what's that? Sex and swears or no? Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, okay. So they also have left. So there was a sister who didn't die. Um, and so she also gets mixed up in this like magical oh, world. Okay. Mm-hmm. And there's lots of magic that happens. There are other forces that come to town. Like there's a lot of magic. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, magic <laughs> is kind of the point of the book. Yes. Love is some sort of central magic hub in this universe. Yes. Uh huh. Um, but I love, so, you know, we said, I said this last time, she is like, she writes modern fairy tales, which I love. Right. Yes. There's, there's usually like a grit and a meanness to them yes, that I like. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like I was saying they were like a little punk rock. Um, and there is like, there, there's a lot of music in this book too. Oh. There, there's musicians. Oh, the music there. teacher. Yeah. There's a music teacher. Um, I just, and I just love her language, like her descriptions of people and places like they're, she's just like nobody else. And that's, I appreciate her very much. So great. Uh, I will say like, I mostly 100% loved being in this world. And so it didn't bother me that it was like, it took me a long time to read. It wasn't like fast, sort of, but I didn't mind because I really enjoyed, but I got to the end and you so it is like you get different characters' perspectives and you kind of revisit scenes again and again from different. So you're like, oh, okay, this is how this person got into that scene or like this is what they were getting out of that scene. So you do kind of end up revisiting certain scenes like a number of times. And so when I got to the end, I was like, yeah, I'm sure we needed to revisit all of those scenes, like all of those <laughs> times. But that, that's my one tiny, tiny, tiny complaint. All right. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> it went on a little bit. Just by the, yeah, at the end. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm also reading a large book about magic, this uh, about magic, this Murtaugh book. And I actually hadn't looked at how many pages it was before, but it is 685 pages. Ooh. Uh, so me. even longer yep. than your book. You um, if people don't remember, this is the uh, Christopher Paolini book, Murtaugh which is a spinoff of his very popular uh, Inheritance series that was about an Aragon, Aragon, the dragon rider. So this is like, you never, sometimes you just don't see things. So I was telling uh, Kate and Rick that Aragon would be a great series for their son, 11-year-old, now 12, Nicholas. Nicholas, yeah. And uh, Gus was like, yeah, it's like dragon, but with an E. 
And like Whoa. I had never I had never read Aragon as just dragon, but then D shifted one down to E, so he's Aragon. The I like for the way I read it, I was like, right. oh, it is just dragon with an E. Like I, <laughs> I don't know. And like if people remember, Christopher Pellini like wrote the first Aragon when he was like twelve, and right. it's like. I don't know what to call the dragon writer. He will be dragon, but with an E, Aragon. You know, like an, oh I, it, my god! But it kind of just made me like just rethink about these books entirely. I don't know, um, <laughs> but so uh, you know, Polini did that whole fractal verse book, right? The, yep. the Sea of Stars that I read, uh, part of my library project, which was also like seven hundred pages. So this guy just cranks out pages, um, and so Murtog is. Uh, so Aragon was the hero of the four books of the Inheritance series. Murtog was his sometimes enemy, sometimes uh, colleague in taking down a bigger bad or whatever, kind of like one of these morally ambiguous uh, side characters. And so now he has been given his own 680-page book where he's the hero. He also has a dragon, same universe. And it just picks up the story, basically. But Aragon's off, like, playing with dragons. And Murtaugh has, like, this thing he's going to do. Um, and I don't know if people... So I feel like there are lots of our customers that are, like, you know, they don't like the fantasy or that, you know... I know. I'm like, we're all ta- we're talking about all these magic books this time. Like, like, I nobody, wish... None of our customers read them. <laughs> I know. But, I, I mean, I I think people don't let themselves enjoy, like, weird creative stuff. like. Uh, and I think for some reason they think like there's more like intellectual effort put into these like literary novels that are realist in, right. in our universe or whatever. But like this dude has like created his own language, right? That he's right. constantly writing in, you know, that I'm supposed to like know and recognize words in now at the end because I've read all these books. He has his characters write poems in like a you know rhyme scheme and meter that he has invented as the like traditional poetry of this race you know like the you know it's like some really cool yeah building i will and, also say that while we're on this topic that kelly yeah. link is a macarthur fellow like <laughs> right like these people are really freaking smart you yeah. know and um i've you know like not everything has to be serious business about how we think of totally. ourselves as humans you know like the reason you know sometimes you want to watch right. a marvel movie and these you know i would rather have a really smart marvel movie than you know Absolutely. something that is just by the numbers oh you know they fought with swords and some people had sex we all went home like you know um so i i thought this it's you know i'm really enjoying it i've read 630 of the 685 pages and I was trying to finish it on the plane but I couldn't quite Uh, get it done Um, so close you know it's a good enough book that like I never touched any media throughout the entirety of flying to Dallas and back this thing love that me entirely and as I you know like I gotta say there used to be a hell of a lot more books on planes I noticed that a lot of people just like zone out to the freaking iPad and uh, Gus and I were like two of the only people reading um, but you know what Gus was reading? What was the uh, like fifty most fun baseball moments book? Oh from, wow! Uh, Joe Posnanski. Yes. Um, and you did you give them? I can't remember. No, did I gave him another like anecdotes from, from the dugout. Is what I gave him, which I thought yeah. that's what you were saying he read. But no. it was Ricky who got it for you. Oh, Grandma Vicky got it for you. All right, so we Grandma <laughs> Vicky bought it from our bookstore to give to Gus. Yes. So, you know, by the transitive property, you gave it to him. And, yes, totally. Uh, I packed it. I wrapped it. Yeah. And he was uh, he was totally engrossed. He read a ton of it on the plane and stuff and was reciting anecdotes to me. And so I, I would say it. very successful present. Sounds uh, like a win. You've got a 17-year-old boy who likes baseball. I recommend the Joe Posnanski book. Quite good. Sweet. Okay. I. What's your other I big book? It's really different. And so, well, okay. The other big book, I'm only halfway through, and so I'm mostly going to talk about it next time. But, oh, okay. Because it's, I mean, so I don't really have my glasses on, so I can't actually read time. if it says 5.30 or 6.30. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm so blind. Uh, it is The Best Minds, A Story of Friendship, Madness, and the Tragedy of Good Intentions by Jonathan Rosen. So uh-huh. preview for next time, I will talk about it 
then. This oh. is nonfiction. I'm actually reading some nonfiction. I'm very proud of myself. Yeah. I don't know. Um, the title didn't exactly sell it. No. So this was one of the New York Times 10 best of the year oh, books. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And I will say, I remember pausing on this book in the catalog and thinking, well, this sounds really good. Like it seems to have a lot going for it, mm-hmm. but it seems like a tough sell. And I feel like I've tried to sell books like this before and nobody wants to read about um, mental illness yeah, and tragedy. Know, this- the subtitle like was like word salad that slipped through my brain without meaning. Some of this book is word salad. <laughs> I mean, like I was like, do those words all go? Like, <laughs> there are definitely sentences that I've reread and been like, what do those words mean together? Yeah, at I some think, at some point, do, there's nothing to grab onto. It's all just <laughs> yes. like like what like ephemeral yes. thought feelings. Like what? Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we will talk about that next time. Um, my other book, I only have one other book that I actually finished to talk about oh, this week, and oh. that is Come and Get It by Kylie Reed. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, okay. I thought you didn't even have a second book, but no, now yeah. you're, you're saying that that's the other big book. That was my that other big book. That's mine. Kylie yeah. Reed's book is not big. No, it's a normal size. Yeah. Uh, and I and listened, listened to it. You listened to this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. It was an audio book. And I, the narrator was fabulous. Um, and her name was Nicole Lewis. So shout out uh-huh. to the narrator uh-huh. because it's set at the university of Arkansas and right. there were all these different Southern accents. There's like, it was like, Oh, this person's from Texas. And then she would like do a, te- I don't know, I guess a Texas accent. And I was like, I could tell that was a Texas accent mm-hmm. versus the like, cause it sounded like Connie Britton. Yes. <laughs> or our cousins or whatever, you know? And then there was like the, Arkansas accent, and then right. there was yeah. like the Tennessee, I don't know, whatever. Huh. Um, and then somebody was from Chicago, you know. So she had these like subtle voices um, that I really appreciated. That's cool. I will say, so Kelly Reed wrote her first book was called Such a Fun Age, which right. That's was the one that was a big book, mega star hit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so I think sophomore efforts can be difficult. I will say this wasn't like a total home run. By any means. <laughs> yeah. um, what is it I, about? It's in the University of Arkansas. Is it a like professor dates dog there, dates young woman? There, book? Is, there is a professor who does date a student, uh-huh. um, not her student. And I haven't read very many of those. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's kind of like, you know, turning that relationship on its head a little bit. Okay, um, yeah. But there are lots of different characters. Most of it, so it's, they keep calling it a campus novel in the descriptions and reviews right. I've been reading. Yeah. Um, it's funny because there are like no scenes set in a classroom. It's almost entirely set in a dorm. Uh-huh. So yeah. the RA is one of the main characters. There are a couple of the, you know, residents. And then there's this visiting professor who's writing a book and she wants to interview students. And her book is um, supposed to be about weddings, but then she decides she's much more interested in students' relationship to money. And that's kind of what the book is. It's about everyone's like relationship to money uh-huh. and consumerism and uh-huh. you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, I will say, like, if you make it to the end, there's a, like a decent payoff. Like everything does kind of like come together at the end. Like you okay. go through most of the book being like, what is this about? Nothing's happening. <laughs> like there's good dialogue, yeah. but but you're like, why? Like, you know, you're just like, are we just making fun of these students? Like, I was are like, we making fun of these students? Is it satire? I, it's supposed to be satire. I just didn't okay. feel like it went far enough, you know, yeah. like to be well, like satire is sort of dead, you know. I don't know what yeah. satire is supposed to be anymore. People are so ludicrous. Right. Um and then, well, I will say that one thing about the dialogue, when you're listening to the audio, I need to go like read a few pages. There's so, they, so many of the characters had this tick of answering with, yeah, no, or no, yeah. So I, when you're listening to it, you're like, are they saying yes? Are they saying no? Like, what is happening? Like, it was like a very weird 
I think that's I don't know yeah, way to write dialogue. I, I, think I guess that's how people talk. Gen Z, yeah. I yeah. Know. You know, I think uh, try, yeah, yeah, it was I, fine. I think Ruby does that a little bit, maybe. Do you like, mean I get that people do it? It's yeah. just it was like a, there was a lot of it in the book. Um and a lot of like when you're listening to the audiobook, a lot of like, oh my gods, and like, oh my god, said in various different ways. Mm-hmm. Um so that, that was my one complaint about the, <laughs> just the like the Britney Spears novel. That's yes. Funny. Well, I mean, I think that's Weird. There's no reason to spend too much time on it, but I I think like if I reading that kind of stuff and I can just buzz through it, right, it bother me at all. But if I had to hear it over and over again, like the Britney Spears, I thought it, you know, right. So maybe for that reason, it's a better read. Yeah. Um, and then so then there is this like big denouement where like everything just like wow. hits the fan, mm-hmm. um, which in some ways was satisfying because you kind of waited so long for like something to happen. And then, like, stuff does happen, and you're like, oh, and then, like, a lot of different storylines come together. Um, but it's not as satisfying as you want it to be, because it, I don't know, it's just, like, n- there are no villains in the book, right? Like, nobody's bad, nobody's purely good. Mm, well, mm-hmm. And then it's just, like, a bunch of bad shit happens, and you're kind of like, oh, well... I don't know. Like you want something good. Yeah, to like yeah, for like well, and also like what are we supposed to think about that? You know, you right. have some sort of like is this book trying to say something or not? Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. Uh-huh. And then I did have to look up why there was a pig on the cover. I was just like, I don't <laughs> but the... I think a sooner is a pig. I I'm pretty sure yes. like right? I had sooner. no idea that sooner is like a, a sooner was a pig, yeah, yeah, but that is the mascot uh, of the University of Arkansas. That is why there is a pig on the cover. And I guess pigs are pigs, and this is about consumer rampant consumerism. So, yeah, everyone's pigging out at Target pigging, yeah. or whatever. The University of Arkansas. I, 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 yeah, so, uh, <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. Uh, I didn't listen to any audiobooks on my trip. I just read. So you I never do. I know. I, I, I've did, dab, I've been reading. I've been listening to some other podcasts. Uh, wow. The guy, apparently, the uh, bookstore in uh, Dallas has a podcast called Across the Pond, oh. where uh, their buyer. I don't know. In Terror Bang, I get they they get a ton of foot traffic. So like square foot, their like sales per square foot must be amazing because they had three people on staff like the day i was there you know not much bigger than ours and they have like a whole buyer who doesn't even like work in the shop Uh, yeah i think i think many stores have that but well not many stores that are 1200 square feet or whatever like us you know um but uh so their buyer uh apparently has a publisher friend in england or something i don't know and uh they talk about what's going on in the literary scene across the pond Cool. So I told them about our podcast. Um, yeah. But that reminds me, the one other book that I wanted to talk about is because I thought it was super cool. Um, I think people are looking for gift books a lot of the time. And mm-hmm. so uh, Rick and Kate were in the bookstore with me. And uh, their kid, like their kids talk about, their kids are very smart. It's sort of annoying. But um <laughs> It's not annoying, but their kids are very smart. Yes. And they like talk about wanting to be theoretical physicists. Uh, they're nine oh. years old and 12 years right. old. Right. And so like they're having multiple conversations about who their favorite theoretical physicist is and this sort of thing. But uh, they were browsing and they found this gorgeous book, The Phenomenon, The Phenomena Celestial Atlas. Have you Ooh. ever heard of that? No, that sounds awesome. Uh, but it's this like gorgeous coffee table size book it's taller than it is wide and um it's just like basically the history of celestial atlases and so like how they people have documented the stars and you know this was in the adult section or the kid section is in the adult section i mean you know it's not a kid's book or whatever but you know you know it's like a it's like a book to have in your household you know like uh like a Just, reference. Yeah, a reference book, a thing that you could have on a table or that you can have on a shelf that you can pull down and like flip through. And, um, I just thought it was really cool. And I haven't, you know, it was a good like family purchase type of thing. Yeah, it sounds they, awesome. They like got it for you... his birthday. And I was like, that is a great birthday present. 
Yeah. When you start talking about gift books and kids in the same sentence, it reminded me for some reason. Did you see that the American Library Association had their awards, big annual awards ceremony this week? Oh, I did see uh, something about that because uh, Eliza Boxer, uh, who is a uh, Portland uh, illustrator, children's author, who used to be a newscaster. So, like, I followed her as a wow. newscaster. And then all of a sudden, she's like, I'm a children's book author. And then she said that she won one of these awards, apparently. I don't know. Uh, cool. I don't know which one. She maybe got one of the honors or um, I, I I don't whatever. know. She, she, she told was, this whole story on social media uh, about how she got like a call, like, make sure you watch the award oh, ceremony. That's so awesome. Oh. Uh, I was just going to mention that you have talked about Eyes of the Impossible by Dave Eggers. Yeah, on yeah, yeah. This podcast. That one? one? That, one that one, the Newber. Uh, whoa, wait, did I say the right one? It won the Newbery Medal. Wow, really? Yeah. Him. That book is, be- it's a really fun book. Uh, I really enjoyed the hell of that. It's just like, so weird and just did such a great job of like what is a like small dog's brain like <laughs> yes so that is awesome and do you have another uh i don't have another about? book i finished the george harrison book uh the film with norman george i finished it in the interim um one thing i thought so you know, it's much smaller than all the other Beatles books. Part of it is just like George Harrison was kind of boring. Like he got into like F1 racing and, uh, you know, producing like bad British movies. Although I guess he produced like Life of Brian, which I think some people think is good. But I don't know, like he just didn't seem very interesting. And the whole story about him like swapping wives with Eric Clapton is just so weird. Do you know about that story? No. Yeah, he was married to this woman, Patty Boyd, and Eric Clapton just like fell in love with her. And at some point, George Harrison was like, Well, you can just like have her. What? Yeah. yeah. And then Clapton did marry Patty Boyd and then divorced her. But at one point, Clapton like shacked up with Patty Boyd's younger sister, Paula, because like he couldn't have Patty and then got her addicted to heroin. And they all like did heroin together. And, wow. Like, it's, not, it's just like, like you know, you're just like, oh, these, this is like the bad Beatles. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. That's but, but so, then it's so funny because at the end, I read like the acknowledgement from uh, Philip Norman who wrote it. And he apologized for the 3,000 word obit he wrote for uh, Harrison when he died back in 2000 or 2001 or whatever. And... Um, he he wrote like this mean obit saying George Harrison was a dick, sort of. I guess I don't know. Oh, and so okay. then he, so that he in the in the acknowledgments he apologizes. He was like, you know, now that I've done all the re- research and stuff, I don't think he was really that bad dude. And it's like, he was kind of the best Beatle. It's, you know. Oh my god! But apparently, he got savaged for like just being mean to George Harrison when he died. Um, but so the, I, you know, that's. You should read it. I, I just don't think many Beatles fans will learn that much. Like, I really right. didn't care about, oh, and then George Harrison, like, bought an island off the coast of Australia and tried to keep people from going on their traditional beach, and they sued him, and it was bad for him. Like, I don't know. It was yeah, too, who too cares? bad for George. Sorry. I did, not me, really. No. Okay. No. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Um People should be aware that we are actively developing the uh, Sunday Salon series. I'm uh, excited. I've been, which will be um, at Hastings House. The first salon is March, March 10th. March 10th. We are Sunday. partnering with the leading ladies, uh, you know, really great little civic organization here in Beverly. And uh, the first uh salon is going to be healthcare related also uh women's history related hannah's going to tell me what the name of the book is and who the author is because she has been googling while i have been talking <laughs> the book is called the women and children first uh it is a biography by susan wilson and it's um It's a biography of Dimmick. Yeah. 
I want to say Susan, Susan Dimmick. Dimmick. Yeah, okay. Susan Dimmick. I was like, is the author Susan too? That's why I got Yeah, confused. they're both named Susan. They're both named Susan. Because Dr. Susan yeah. Dimmick is, uh, was a super badass who was like one of the very first female surgeons in the United States, was denied Harvard Medical School because they're dicks, and went to Austria for medical school, came back, uh, was a badass surgeon, founded the first new nursing school in the United States. And now, like, there's a whole, like, children's hospital that's named after her, I think, like, the Dimmick. Wow, look at all you know. Like, you read the book already. Well, I just did a little research because I was writing a newsletter and I had to seem like, but it, I was, I was like, oh, there should be a book about this person. Um, yeah. So no, that I think be good. it's going to be a great talk. Yeah. And so we're trying to revamp the book club a little bit in that it's going to be in person and it's also going to be just a little bit more tied to uh, societal issues, I think, for this little three-month run, right? We're going to do something on healthcare, we're going to do something on labor, and we're going to do something on the environment. I think the environment, yeah. yeah. And i just like to try to tie in some uh, thoughts, and we'll see how people like that, and maybe we'll... Uh, we like working with the Hastings House, so maybe we'll continue that afterwards, but I am looking forward to that. Yeah, no, I'm excited. All right. Uh, if we don't have anything else, don't forget to uh, like us and comment online and share with your friends. That's an important thing that you're supposed to say during podcasts. And um, Rick Johansson, want to thank you. I you, You'll see that our faces are on our YouTube thing now. I, I know you noticed it because you commented on it. And uh, we are now up to, I think... 11 views on YouTube, which is a great success. But it was three last week, I think. See? It's going up. <laughs> Maybe it's going up. Um, let's see the, you know, the people. Let's see how many. Is oh, no, I'm sorry. 16. 16. Wow. And last week only had eight. So the faces doubled. have doubled. 100% increase just by adding our faces. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. It's fantastic. All right, so uh, with nothing else uh, to talk about, uh, we will see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.